No bride is safe. The amount of death in this sick and dirty tale is double that of the infamously murderous Bluebeard, and it keeps on happening in the strangest way. It will make you question whether happily ever after is really what these characters deserve, or if they actually deserve to be haunted forevermore. This old but newly rediscovered fairy tale is dark, full of death and dirty, dirty deeds with many, many enchanting beings. There are more missing women than in Bluebeard's murder lab for sure, so follow me if you dare into the slippery, saucy, and disturbing tale. Once upon a time, as always, our story starts with death. Here, a widow has just lost her husband, a knight, and in her extreme antisocial grief, decides to live in a castle on a little island in the middle of a big lake. She must be well off to afford such a place, but she and her only son, who is 12 at the time of dad's death, spend 12 years there doing God's knows what to keep from being bored. The number 12 is extremely important to the story, as you'll soon see. During these 12 years, the boy grows handsome, though he is super pale and withdrawn, can't imagine why, and just stares at the lake and daydreams. Mom eventually gets so lonely on her remote rock that she insists that her now 24-year-old son get married and presumably fill the castle up with tons of pittering pattering baby feet. I mean, or she could just go back to the mainland. Just a thought. Also, where would he find a bride, isolated as they are? He does not want to get married, but she keeps pushing him, and eventually, while staring at the moon reflected in the water through an open window, he imagines the face of the woman he hopes to marry one day. Then, he goes to bed without closing the window. And that night, there is a flash, and the curtains rustle, and bathed in moonlight, wearing a transparent nightgown, is the most beautiful woman this guy has ever seen. Although, has he seen anyone except mom and maybe a skeleton staff, really? Anyway, they of course get it on. Unlike Basile's Myrtle Man, this guy can see the woman clearly through all the playful games and loving chatter all night. She tells him she saw him wistfully looking out at the water for years, and had he kept that window open, she would have come to his bed a long time ago. She tells him she will return, but vanishes with the morning. From then on, the pretty lady warms his bed and sleeps by his side every night. But he's not entirely sure it's the same woman each night. How would you not know? There's light and moonlight. Or are we rocking the typical fairy tale prince forgetful face fog here? Anyway, he's in love. He wants to get married. Mom keeps pressuring him for grandkids. So he asks the lady to show herself by daylight to show mom he's not delusional and to be his wife. But the pretty lady says, That's just not possible, my dearest. I can't get married in the way you're imagining. Let me be your wife by sharing your bed. He's not complaining because each night is an adventure. But mom is getting desperate for babies, searching for anyone to marry her son. She finds a woman who does nothing to spark a <laughs> excitement in her son. Doesn't matter, the son's still making someone sigh in bed every night. And the wedding date is set. This wedding is a three-day ordeal, and honestly, the more days the better because it means our poor bride has one more day on this mortal plane. Day one is dancing, day two is a huge banquet, and on day three, well, night three, the bride is finally led to the bedchamber. The bed curtains fly in all directions when they enter. What a supernaturally imposing start! With trepidation, the bride gets into the bed first, as she's apparently supposed to do, but can't shake the feeling like there's someone already in it. The groom gets excited about her nervousness, probably thinking it's for the deed ahead, and climbs right into bed after her. Neither of them realize there's a freaking mermaid between them. Now, yes, I do need to go on a tangent here because, yes, it's just been revealed that the woman, or women, this guy has been pumping since this started are mermaids. And you may well wonder how the act is possible with a fishtail in an <laughs> inconvenient place. Also, how did he not notice is another. But here's the thing about mermaids in these Bavarian tales, and there is a note from Schoenworth, the collector, from a previous story I covered, The Red Silk Ribbon, that is super relevant. Mermaids are highly evolved creatures that dwell in the water but are not restricted to living there. They are able to take on a human form partially or entirely and to become radiantly beautiful women. They long for the love of handsome men and to lure them down into the watery depths or they go on land and spend time with them there. 
these mermaids um, certainly have been spending time with this mortal man. And what's more, mermaids seek long life through the love of mortals. Which, this solo guy on a small island in the middle of a big lake is probably their only bet. So it makes sense that they've shared his love for years between them. Sharing is caring for each other's immortality. This is not great for the new bride who is a threat to this immortality granting love, because mermaids apparently have ice cold fog breath of death. Before the newly married couple can get it on, the mermaid laying on the bed between them breathes this death fog on the new bride, who gets pushed to the edge of the bed and stays there. The guy holds tight to the mermaid thinking it's his new bride and goes to town. This happens every night for a year. Open your eyes, man! And eventually the new bride, not pregnant because she's been intercepted, wastes away to nothing and dies, either from the death breath or just feeling hopeless and neglected and depressed on a remote rock with this indiscriminate guy who should consider glasses? This goes on for 12 years. So far, 11 new brides have died after a year of fruitless and loveless marriage. Where and how the mom keeps finding these girls is beyond me, and why they would keep making the death trek to the island, well, it's probably not their choice. For all anyone knows, this guy could be a slow death bluebeard protege. Girl after girl shows up, dies within a year, repeat, repeat, repeat. No investigations, no concerns, no blame. For shame! Anyway, the would-be 12th bride is no fool. She's not ready to waste away to death, so consults a witch before heading out to the death rock. The witch, who conveniently knows exactly what's happening, tells the 12th woman that it's mermaids who are responsible. The witch says in order to protect herself, she must not follow her husband into the bedroom on that third wedding night, and to wait until after the witching hour. This will save her and him. She goes on, at midnight, he will tell you that he feels like someone is pushing him into the bedroom, but to hold firm and to also shut that bedroom window so the spirits can't come in. Why did no one think of this before? The man might be drawn by the mournful sounds and jump out of the window. So the twelfth bride should wrap a bundle of magic herbs and place them under the bed. There's more, and maybe it's a modesty thing, but she is not to draw the curtains of the bed first. Her husband should do that and get into the bed before her can't have her be eager, I guess. Also, if she tells him any of this, he will go back under the spell of the mermaids. She's certainly going through a lot to save him from his own folly, but she'll be swept up in death breath if she doesn't, so she sticks to this plan. On the third night, the consummation night, the groom has an odd premonition and just has to get to the bedroom. He uh, may have a reliance on a certain act which the story paints as being ensnared by mermaids. Anyway, the new bride holds back until after midnight. Once they are finally in the bedroom, as he opens the bed curtains, twelve sighs could be heard. Then the bride says some unknown to us magical words and prays to their god. Apparently, this guy hasn't prayed in twelve years. The lake rises high, waves hit the window violently, and there's some super strange enchanting music coming from depths nowhere. But after the water recedes, peace reigned forever afterwards. The end. There's no mention if mom ever got her grandchildren to keep her not bored. My hunch is that she'll have, let's guess, 12? And it would be brilliant if each one was actually a reincarnated mermaid spirit from before sent to torment the castle and the people who let all those women die forever after. Or 11 and they're all the dead brides brought back for vengeance. How do you not look into suspicious deaths of so many and keep sending lambs to the slaughter? Where are all these poor women buried? On wasting away Death Island forevermore? That stinks! I hope they become the next wave of enchanting mermaids and no mortal can live in peace on this rock. <laughs> Wait, that got dark. <laughs> but no, this story has a happily ever after for the knight's son and his new bride. Well, there's peace for them at any rate. It's not a happily ever after for the previous 11 women or the mermaids who were just doing what mermaids do and happened to find an overeager and very willing participant in the night's sun. But this was the twisted old dark fairy tale, 12 Brides from Schoenworth's collection. It's a newly rediscovered tale and I hope you enjoyed the telling of it. Is it worse than Bluebeard with the sheer doubled number of women affected? Bluebeard has five bodies and was about to do in a sixth, but this story has eleven wasting away slowly with no intervention or questioning by the man or his enabling mother. Was this actually a happily ever after? Do happily ever afters always have to be fair? 
Who gets to decide this? Well, with World Anvil, you do. It's the ultimate toolkit for any creative, for world building, writing, artistic endeavors, even plotting out extensive campaigns on amazing maps. Not happy with this particular fairy tale? Well, you can set up your own isolated castle rock in the middle of an isolated big lake and make it your own. Or extend the ending to include those 11 brides' revenge. Just saying. These interactive map tools are so powerful. World Anvil is designed to help you create your own worlds and stories with ease and inspiration. You can track everything from world lore and geography to character motivations, family trees, timelines, subplots, and more in one secure place. You'll never lose a thread again. All of your creativity is stored in a wiki-styled repository for you to access as you need it. And you can choose to share your creations with the world or keep them secret and safe. Or tease piece by piece at a time to build the hype. That's right, you can monetize and publish directly from World Anvil in ways that suit your work to various platforms. Chapter by chapter, audiobooks, character hints, and more. Whether you're running a campaign, writing a novel, or creating a new world, use my link, worldanvil.com slash abitfrank, to see what World Anvil has to offer. It is free to sign up, but with my code, abitfrank, you'll get 51% off of any yearly subscription. As part of the guild, you'll have access to even more tools, collaborators, advanced security measures, publishing options, and more. Start putting the creations in your head out into the world. Thank you to World Anvil for sponsoring this video. Thanks for getting into the murky depths with me for this dark fairy tale. Do let me know what you think and what else you'd like to see here on this channel in the comments below. Subscribe so you won't miss what's brewing in the cauldron. Ready quite soon. Goodbye!